Hi. Well, have no fear for maths. Have no fear for indices. We're going to do a little bit of a challenge drill. And I want you to have no fear. Because fear makes you freeze and you can't think right. So remember that. Fear no maths. Now look at this sum. 2 to the power x and you have 2 to the power x plus 1 is equal to 12. What, how do you solve for x? This is an equation. Now you write this as 2 to the power of x plus look at 2 to the power of x plus 1 is 2 to the power 1 times 2 to the power of x and that's 12. Now look at that again x plus 1. Break this number down. Alright, it means 2 to the power x times 2 to the power of 1. When you look at this again, look at it carefully. This number, when you add them up, when you 2 to the power 1 times 2 to the power x, goes back to 2 to the power x plus 1. So, if you look at it, we want to solve for x. This is like the same 2 to the power x. Hey, I've got one of you. And you look at it, I've got two of you. One, I would say one of you plus two of you will give it three. Alright, let's call it one little, uh, give an item to it. What animal is your favourite? A monkey? Alright, <laughs> one monkey plus two monkeys give us three monkeys. What is the monkey? 2 to the power of x. Alright, so we said 3 monkeys. The monkeys is 2 to the power of x is equal to 12. Now bring the 3 over. So 2 to the power of x is 12 divided by 3. And you get a 4. And now we want to solve for x. What is x? 2 to the power of x is 4. And 4 is 2 squared. That means your x is equal to 2. Have you got it right? Good. Alright, make it simple, as easy as ABC. Alright, just to reinforce this, you look at the sum again. 2 to the power x plus 1 is 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2x. And they're both the same. How many of it? One of that and two of that. One monkey plus two monkeys will give us three monkeys is 12. What is one monkey equals to? We divide the 12 by three. We've got a four. Make a link now. Four is two squared. Hence, your x is two. Let's look at the sum again. They have the similar nature. Now don't forget, this is also a plus. Don't you go and add them up. Nope. Although they are both twos. That's a common problem that many students do. They add the powers up and say it's 2 to the power of 2x plus 1. And that's equal to 12. No. Because this is a plus. Plus does not apply to laws of indices. You got it? A M times A N. Then you add them up. Alright, just a gentle reminder. Let's look at the same sum. Not very different from that, right? First, we want to show. They wanted to show that this number is divisible by 10. How do we do that? We said, alright, you are 3 to the power of x. And your 3 squared, alright, and 3 to the power of x. This is the monkey. How many monkeys do we have? One monkey. How about here? How many monkeys do we have? 3 squared is how many? 9. 9 plus 1, 10 monkeys. And isn't this number a multiple of 10? Because it's a multiple of 10, therefore, this number, therefore, the above number is divisible by 10. It is divisible by 
10. The number above. Alright? Got it? You gotta look for the connection. Alright? It's there is a 10 in it. A multiple of 10 to show it's divisible by 10. Let's look at the next one. We want to show that this number is divisible by 12 as well as is divisible by 21. Alright? How do we do that? We look at it again and see it. Well, 2 to the power of 3. Let me see. Alright. We've got 2 to the power of 3. Oh, just give me a minute. Let me check out the sum. Uh, we're going to make a little bit of a correction because it's not divisible. I'm going to show you now. It's not divisible by 12. It's not divisible by 21. All right, there was a little bit of an error there. Now, this sum is actually 2 cubed and 2 to the power of x. All right, and if you look at that, 2 squared and 2 to the power of x. Do you see that, class? If you look at it, 2 cubed is 8 monkeys minus 4 monkeys. 8 take away 4 is 4. So you can see that the 2 to the power of x is not divisible by 12, not divisible by 21. It's not divisible. Alright? So we said, oops, sorry, you're not divisible by these numbers. Unless if I see a multiple of a 12 or a 21. Let's alter this number now to 2 to the power of x plus 8 minus 2 to the power of 2 plus x to see if this number is divisible by 12 and is this number divisible by 21. Let's find out. What do we do again? What does this mean? It means 2 to the power of 8 and 2 to the power of x here. That's what it means when you add them up, you get that, right? The laws of indices. Here, you have 2 to the power of 2 and 2 to the power of x. When you multiply, you add up the powers, referring to laws of indices. What's 2 to the power of 8? 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 2, 8, 2, 5, 6, right? 64, 1, 2, 8. 128 and 128 gives us 256. So 2 to the power 8 is 256 donkeys minus 4 donkeys. And now we look at it, 256 minus 4 is 252 2x. Is this number divisible by 12? Let's look at it quietly. 252 divided by 12. You get a 2, which is 24. Carry the 1 over, you get a 1. Yes! So this number is none other than 12 times 21. 2 to the power of x. So what can you say about this number? This number is divisible by 12 and is divisible by 21. Do you see that? Right, good. Now let's, this is not an equation. We're just testing in a different way. They're asking you if it's divisible by a certain number. So you want to see the multiple coming out. Whereas in this sum, what do you see there? Equation. And in equation, what do you do? Solve it. Great. Let's make this a common term. This is 2 to the power of x. This is 2 to the power 2, x plus 3. And hey, 16, you have 2 to the power 4, 2x minus 1. We've got the link. And in this case, they're all times. And what do you do, my dear? You just add the powers up. You've got 2 to the power of x. And here you've got 2 to the power of 2x plus 6. And here, yes. You got 2 to the power of 8x minus 4. 
Be careful. Please take note when you expand. Here too, expand cautiously. When you multiply, you add up the powers. You got a 3x plus 6. And what you get here? You got an 8x minus 4. What do you do then? The powers become equal. The right hand side, the powers, because they're both 3. And I'm sure you can solve from there. Bring your 3x over, you got a 5x. Bring your 4 over, you've got a 10. A 10 is equal to a 5x. Alright? And so your x is equal to 2. That's your answer for this sum. 3 times 2, 6. 6 plus 6, 12. Here, 8 times 2, 16. 16 minus 4, 12. They both balance. Have you got it? Shall I say it again? What did I do? I broke them to a common number. I broke them to twos. And once I did it, it became easier. I opened, expanded them. And then applied the laws of indices, added them up, and the powers on the left hand and the right hand became equal. And we equated and solved it. Alright? Do your maths step by step and you'll get it right. Be cautious. Alright? Do not be in a hurry because that's when you make carelessness. You make careless mistakes. Alright. Now let's look at this. Is this an equation? Yes. And what are we asked to do? Nothing, but you look at it. You're expected to solve x. That's the unspoken thing about this equation. The unknown is there. X. Who is X? Now, if you look at a power, one third, it's only for X, not for 16. And when you write it one third, it means the cube root. So, what we need to do is say A. 4 cubed is 64. And 2 to the power 7 is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 2, 8. We can go faster now. Bring this 64 over. 1, 2, 8, minus 64. Now, do you see maths becoming so easy? Alright? You can see the flow. 1, 2, 8, take away 64. You get 64. And this is 16. X to the power of 1 third. Now, my dear, 16 is the times. When you bring it over, it becomes a divide. So your x to the power of one third is 64 divided by 16. Doom, doom. You get a 4. Now, x to the power of one third is a 4. Remember what we did earlier on? We want to change this power to 1. What do we do? Multiply it by 3. And what do we do? Multiply it by 3. Cancel off. Your x is equal to 4 cubed. So your x is none other than 64. So your answer for this sum, x is equal to 64. Do you see how easy it is? Now, let's look at this. Don't have any fear. You see an x, you see an x. You see a 1. Connect them all. When do you get a 1? Any number to power of a 0 will give you a 1. So why not we make this? Hey, minus 2x. You must be a 0 because any number to power of 0 is a 1. So what does x become? Minus 2x is a 0. x is a 0. Now using that, look at this. As this is a challenge drill, can you do that? Is it going to pose you a lot of difficulties? Any number to the power of something is equal to 1. It tells you that this number must be equal to 0. That is, alright, I'm doing it here. x squared minus x minus 6 
must be zero. Can you factorize that? All right, we factorize it. You learned it in secondary two here. You put an X and an X, you put a minus three and a plus two. So when you solve it, your X is going to be a minus two or a three. Either one of them would give you that answer. Now, let's, let's remember one thing. Indices is not difficult. All we need to know is to know the laws of indices at fingertips. The eight powerful laws. A to the power of zero is one. AM times AN. You add up the powers. When you divide the third law, you take away the powers. The fourth law, you do a power, power, you multiply the powers. All right? And when you have a to the power of minus n, make it positive. The rest of the four laws, I'm sure you know it. So think back, apply them, and any difficult sum is not difficult if you get back again to help your laws guide you through. With that, I like to say you'll be a master of indices. Just follow through. Go back, rewind, find out more. Thank you.